Want to know a really, really great exercise to improve your hip bone density, reduce your risk of a fracture? I sure do, but I also want to know why we're wearing these sweatshirts. Well, first of all, welcome to Talking With Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weiner. I'm Dr. Paul Salzo. And it's a good point. Why are we wearing sweatshirts? Hey, we're going to do a little bit of exercise today. I know it's chest day for you. Yeah. However, uh, we're doing a little exercise today that's going to demonstrate one of the best things you can do to help your own bone density. We're taking it to the streets, or well, really, we're going to take it to the stairs. Okay, fair. Okay, so what we're talking about is the, the jump down hop exercise. So it sounds, JDH. It sounds, it sounds super weird. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're jumping down from a step, mm -hmm. so somewhere in the 8 to 16 inch range. And to give you some perspective, code in North America is somewhere in the 7 to 7 and a half inch range. Yeah. So you're jumping off a step, and then once you land, the goal is don't try to land soft. You want a, a relatively firm impact on the ground, and immediately after that, then you take a hop. Yeah. As high as you can, not as far as you can. It's not the triple jump. You're yeah. trying to jump up, and yeah. then have a sexy, essentially a second impact onto yeah. the ground. Try and sing zippity doo -dah while you do it. Right, and the thought being that the, the first impact, as well as the second impact, puts a specific stress and strain on your bone to improve bone density. We've talked about this a lot. Okay. Bone responds to stress impact, load, resistance training. So I'm, I, I'm, here, with, I'm here with Wolf, actually, <laughs> of Wolf's Law, doc, other, AKA Dr. Paul Zalzow. No, I'm gonna stress you out by talking about strain and stress. For okay, me. here we okay. go. You gotta understand the difference between stress and strain if you wanna understand what's happening in your body when you do this. If you're not interested in physics, just go grab a snack no, and come back in like you, a minute. If, if, you're not, if you're interested in your own body. Agreed. Okay, so stress is a measure of load per area. Okay? Right. That's that is not how much of a bad day you've had now I'm stressed out. Stress is how much load you're putting, how much force you're putting something over an, an area. Right, so when you're jumping off that stair, it's essentially like your weight and the force of gravity yeah. over the area of your shoes, essentially. Yeah, whatever part's hitting the ground. Okay. Strain, on the other hand, is a measure of how much something deforms compared to its original size. And we're talking about your hip bone or yeah. your back or your knee or whatever. Yeah. We're talking mostly about the hip so today. So stress is like Newton's, Newton's per unit area yes. or Pascal's. Strain has no unit because it's just how long the thing was, then I stretched it or squished it, and mm -hmm. how much it changed compared to its original amount. So it's almost a percent. So it's just a number. It has no units. Okay, so that's stress and strain. What's happening here with the jump hop that you're describing, yes. it's really what's changing is the strain rate in right. the bone, okay? And this bone detects strain rate, okay? And that stimulates osteogenesis. Osteo meaning bone, genesis, that band from the 90s? No, genesis means to make something. Osteogenesis, right? So bone is very sensitive to strain rate. So strain rate is how much strain is happening over time. Right. With the jump down, it's a very short time, so the strain rate's very high, so the right. little fluids in the bone canals moves, shears quick, and that is very osteogenic. Yeah, and there, and there are a lot of trials that have looked at this type of training, and we'll list a couple in the description. In particular, the Lift More trial, they did not do the jump down hop study, but what they did is they did a jump up onto a chin-up bar, and then you drop down under a controlled setting. So essentially, you're just doing the drop part rather than being yeah. able to jump up. However, we do not want you to try this and fall and break a hip. It's yeah. not called the jump, hop, break a hip <laughs> test. We really don't want that to happen. We don't want it to be a jump, hop, break a wrist, jump, hop, break the back. It's just a jump, hop test. And I think this is why it should be A, supervised, B, you gradually increase not only yeah. the height, but the number of reps that you do. Yes, and if you're not doing any sort of exercise in general, yes. don't start with this one, okay? Totally build, agree. Build up to this. So just be super careful, don't hurt yourself. So a couple things about this. So people are like, well, how many, how many jumps do I have to do? So they figured the sweet spot is somewhere in the 50 to 100 reps per week. Okay. So you can do 10 or 15 reps, three sets, a couple times a week, and you can increase not only the, the how aggressively you do it, but um, even the height that you do it from up to, say, 16 inches. Beyond 16 inches, they looked, mm -hmm. and there actually was no significant benefit other than increased risk of injury. Right. So you don't, so you don't have to go two or three, because some people do box jumps on 30 or 36 inch boxes, yeah. um, but you're not, you're not getting that same benefit, you are getting the risk. So I was thinking about this, I'm like, oh, okay, well, what about, why can't just walking, essentially walking is kind of like a tiny little jump. Walking is, but you're not, your strain rate is not as high as a jump. Right, okay? that's Because 
Well, walking is not is not increasing your strain as right. much as a jump is, right. and you're not doing it as quickly as a jump. Right. Same rationale for why you're simply putting on a weighted vest may be beneficial, but yeah. you're not you're not jumping with a weighted vest. No. So I was like, okay, what about other exercises? What about skipping? Well, skipping, yes, but typically when you skip, you're landing quite softly. You're on the balls of your feet. You're not putting that full foot high impact when you skip. Otherwise, you would look very odd skipping. And you're usually whistling. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't, no, I mean like skipping rope. Right. Oh, okay. Same with a rebounder. So a lot of people, yeah, I mean, we're going to do a specific video about rebounders alone, but mm -hmm. rebounders like a little mini trampoline. The whole thing is when you're jumping on the trampoline, the trampoline and the stretchiness of it absorbs a lot of the force, so you're not getting yes. that really, really hard impact. That's taking the strain. Yeah. This is why running is better than walking, though, because when you are running, most of your distance, though, is horizontal, okay. unless you jump really, really high. That would be more beneficial if you're only trying to get bone density benefits in your head. Okay, Dick Van Dyke, let's go show this jump, hop, skip, run, Okay, whatever let's we're going to do. So this is the jump, hop test. Here we go. Sorry about the echo, because we're in a stairwell. We're in the stairwell at the hospital. Are you ready, Laverne? Yeah, yeah, get going, Shirley. And so that's about a seven inch step. So this would be closer to the 14 to 16 range, which is the upper limit of the benefit. So you're jumping down and then a big hop. So you're getting two hard impacts, not trying to cushion it as much as you normally would to protect yourself. You actually want that hard impact to increase your strain rate on your bones. Because the strain rate is what's gonna trigger the osteogenesis. You want that bone density to increase. Okay, so that was, that was very interesting. I'm exhausted. Yes. All right, now, did you notice there was two of us there, so there, it was essentially supervised, so yes. we weren't doing this alone. And we have been exercising, so we feel comfortable doing that. Yep. Check with your physical therapist before you try and do something like this or do it under their supervision yep. first. 50 to 100 reps a week, 10 to 15 reps per set. And don't try to be like that 10-year-old kid that's trying to jump all the steps at the same time. Did you ever do that when you were a kid, trying yeah. to jump the whole flight yeah. of stairs at the same time? Not yeah. the whole flight, but maybe the last yeah. four. You've done the whole flight? Yeah. Like Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone? Kinda, yeah. Without the sled? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and the take home message again, it's just like all of our videos. So think about doing something that's good for your bones. So a combination of resistance training and then even this, this impact type training if you, if you feel safe and if you have the mobility to facilitate it. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, share it with someone that you know that needs to work on their hip bone density. Yeah, teach them about stress, strain, and strain rate. <laughs> Remember, you are in charge of, oh, oh, if you want to get one of these sweatshirts, oh, yeah, yeah. you can get one. Portion number of sales goes to our charities, yep. um, and you, you'll look pretty cool just like us wearing it. <laughs> Remember, you Hopefully. are in charge of your own health. Hopefully you look more cool than us. It's we'll, not hard to we'll, do. We'll see you next time.